Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. A few more of my clients have opened up this week, which is kind of cool. I definitely need a lot more than to open up. Uh, there's not really as much of a workload as far as cleaning aquariums go. Uh, I have been recording some of it though, so I will be showing you uh, videos coming up, uh, well, probably in the next week or two, and showing you uh, the state of some tanks and some of the things that have happened because of all the shutdowns and everything. But getting an aquarium up and running again, it's not such a big deal. But the funny thing is, even though I'm working on a rather a small percentage of my original workload from, you know, from Canadian aquariums, it is actually taking a lot of time. And that's because there are an awful lot of new protocols that I need to follow. Uh, it varies depending upon the client because uh, some people, like the ones that have um, been open at least a little bit uh, and come in and whatnot and having to deal with the public, they're a little bit more, not, I wouldn't call it relaxed, but they're not, uh, well, paranoid maybe might be a word. Uh, it is not as stringent, um, but I do have some clients that, you know, deal with a lot of public and they have to follow everything um, like strict guidelines and pretty much when I go in I have to fill out forms I have to have my temperature taken and then there's masks and gloves and all that sort of stuff fortunately for me because I actually have to put my uh, hands in the aquarium I don't have to use the gel I'm not a big fan of that stuff but what I do instead is I will wear uh, a disposable glove on my left hand because I'm right-handed and I'll use my left hand to manipulate anything I need to do in the place like taps that sort of stuff and I will uh, use my right hand uh, to actually work in the aquarium so it does uh, it's a compromise I think that works quite well and of course I still have to wear the mask which is not a whole lot of fun when it's hot out but fortunately at least uh, my clients are air conditioned so anyway that's kind of the way my life is going at the moment and I didn't really have enough extra time because you know I'm, I'm still trying to keep up the three videos a week uh, at least for the next little while anyway and uh, I needed to finish this station uh, it is I think going to have some interesting uses and I didn't have enough time to do that and uh, do another build so uh, my apologies <laughs> you get to look at this again so that all said what I'm doing here is, as you can see, I'm drilling and tapping. The, this is the ring that's going to fit around uh, the high-speed router. And I need a way of clamping it in place so it doesn't shift around. And so I'm going to drill and tap one hole on this side. And it's going to fit one of these bolts. And then I'll flip it uh, 180 and I'll do the other side. And this way I can lock it in uh, nice and tight. The other thing I need to do is uh, drill and countersink some holes into the Delrin plate here so I can attach it to the wooden ring. And as you see, I decided to go with four, and that was simply because of ease of layout. It was just a nice uh, cross pattern. And here you go. It's all set and ready to attach. Now, the, the neat thing about doing it this way, uh, these two rings fit nice and snugly over the router. So all I need to do is... Uh, put them into place. I uh, don't need to worry about attaching the two of them together yet uh, because they'll be held together by the router itself and then I just slide them over, tighten things down and then uh, the top the well, the the top of the miter station which is uh, these two are going to attach to underneath uh, I'm going to drill a one inch hole in that and one thing I need to do is center this uh, bit into the one inch hole and that was the, the reason for doing it this way. I mean, uh, even though this seems to be slightly turned, uh, that part doesn't matter because I haven't, uh, you know, put the screws in to hold it in place yet. All I did was I uh, put this in place, put a bit of glue there, and then from underneath I can make sure that the drill bit is centered perfectly. Oh, sorry, the rudder bit. And then just clamp it all in place. And then wait for the, the glue to dry. And that's as simple as that. I mean, it was actually rather, rather easy to do. So that was just a simple matter of taking the clamps off and uh, then building the legs. The legs are... I decided... I, mean, I was going to make this a little bit more elaborate, but I want to test it out first in case I want to change anything before I go you know, doing any fine woodworking or anything. 
So what you're going to get today is mostly just a functional item, that's all. So there you go, that comes up quite easily. And it's glued into place, a little bit of slop there, but that's fine. It's all going to be hidden, and now it's a simple matter of using, again, this as a guide, and it will uh, center, and then it'll just screw and tighten in place. It's, uh, like I said, it just makes it easy to do that way. So this is the under underside of uh, the, t the station. So once this is flipped over and it's got legs, it'll be easier for you to see. And then right now, all I'm doing is using uh, kind of crude adjustments to this because uh, I don't have any fine adjustments like a, a some sort of screw system for lifting and, and, and moving this around. So it just sticks through the hole and then once the legs are idle, once it's all set in place, I can uh, push the router further into the hole or uh, withdraw it and that way I can make adjustments for it. Uh, later on, as I get more use and I actually find it useful, I'll do some sort of other uh, thing for it. So here we go, this is the uh, four legs, very quick, just right angles just to give it some sturdiness and then I drilled the one inch hole and these are just going to get screwed on the, onto that and then I'll flip it over and attach it. Now one other thing I need to do for this because I mean rotor bits like specifically this one I'm using here is designed for wood so it has a little bit of a bearing on the top of that little round bit and it's fine for wood uh, you can do a round off quite easily and it doesn't uh, leave any marks on it but you can't do that with acrylic. If I were to have uh, the router bit, uh, that little round bit, um, rub up against the acrylic, it'll not only just scratch it, but it'll also partially melt it. So that's <laughs> that can't happen. So one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to make it off camera so you don't have to put up with it. Uh, I am going to make a fence, and the fence is going to be offset. It is going to have um, like it's going to have the vertical part, which is what I'm going to rub up against. So you'll see it as, as actually uh, at the end of this one, I'm actually uh, using it to um, round off a couple of edges. That part is what only part that's going to touch uh, the acrylic. So that way I don't have to worry about you know heating the acrylic up. The only part that's going to actually come in contact with it is a little bit at the bottom, which is going to rub up against uh, the acrylic and round it off. So this is the pieces. Uh, for some reason, I decided to pre-measure and use my milling machine to um, set them all up, drill the holes, countersink them, and then put it all together afterwards. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, so this is a planter box I made a little while ago. You can see it's a little bit dirty, which is fine because I just I didn't want to test anything new out on it. And I currently have um, the round off edge a little higher than I wanted it to. I just put a piece of wood in there initially to touch it. And this is taking off way too much material. But I wanted to try it out a few times and get a, get a feel for it before I actually um, put it you know, with you know a piece of finer acrylic. Uh, I ended up deciding to use, if you remember the test I did between uh, Weldon and Methylene Chloride a little while ago, is actually perfect because it's uh, one eighth inch and quarter inch, so it's uh, it sets up quite nicely as far as uh, you know a perfect experiment for this, I guess. Uh, this is an even dirtier box, but it's bigger and more robust, and I wanted to see how that looked. And this is actually from the uh, plant versus gravel planters I did. I've subdivided all of those now, so that's why it looks like it's uh, been sitting in soil. So anyway, it works. I think this rotor bit is too uh, old, and it's definitely not sharp enough for this. Uh, but I'm going to pick up another one, and we'll give that a try too. So yeah, this is way too much material being removed, so I, I took the time to adjust everything uh, to get it just to pass ever so slightly over it. And this is the, the test piece, so we're going to run that through. It's fine, but again, it needs the bit needs to be sharper. It just does. So I am going to do that, and I'm not going to inflict any more of these on you, I don't think. Uh, but you will get to see this being used. So anyway, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. That would be much appreciated. And leave comments. And let me know what you think of this. Uh, it was easy to build. Uh, it didn't take that much time. But um, 
it has to be useful for me. I mean, I don't, I don't do a lot of woodworking and that sort of stuff simply because uh, I don't really need that many extra pieces of equipment. Uh, so I don't really, uh, you know, build lots and lots of different things. Uh, but I, when I do need something uh, like this, uh, I do like to put stuff together. And if you guys don't mind seeing that sort of stuff, let me know below and I will continue to show you at least little bits and pieces of it. Most likely the rest of it will just be uh, parts for, um, like, parts of videos. So anyway, it is, like I said, it does what it needs to do, but that edge needs to be finer. Uh, so I'm going to try a sharper bit and I'll let you know what that, how that turns out. But this is kind of the finishing I need. It takes that sharp edge off the acrylic. So anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.